here is my usual university screen setup. In the middle is a Samsung U28 E590 D and on the left and the right are Dell 205 FPW displays. Now the Samsung is 4K so it's 3840 by 2160 Meanwhile, the Dells are in portrait, so are 1200 by 1920 pixels. As you can see, the operating system running through these is Windows 10, and this is the latest version of it, so 1903, which is why the desktop wallpaper is as it is. However, instead of this being driven by my laptop as it usually would, I have the Pentium 4 motherboard out and it is in fact powering all this despite being so old. So this is a Gigabyte GA8i915PM motherboard which has an Intel Pentium 4 Prescott which is a 530J which is an absolute heat monster. This thing fires out a huge amount of heat. The Pentium 4 530 and 530J are both 84 watt hyper threaded CPUs. However, the important part for this project and running Windows 10 is that the 530J supports NX, which is required for Windows 10 installation out of the box. Now, RAM wise, this has 2 gigabytes of RAM across four 512 megabyte sticks and then storage wise I have a 120 gigabyte Kingston SSD. This does have IDE port but it's better just to use SATA. On the graphics card side of things there is an AMD Radeon HD7750 which has the display outputs required to run these screens. So there's DVI, which is doing one of the Dells, the Dell over there. Then there's HDMI, which is going to an HDMI to DVI cable, which then feeds the left Dell. And then display port at the top there, which then feeds the Samsung 4K display. Now, thanks to the SSD, this does actually boot up and operate programs quite quickly, as I will now demonstrate. So here we can see the boot up process, and the BIOS appears quite quickly, being quite legacy looking understandably, and the SSD will appear under the IDE drive section. And there we go. So um, next step, the Windows logo will appear alongside the usual kind of startup procedure. Curiously, it appears on the left screen and the central one. Not completely sure why not the right one, but that will be down to probably the graphics card. And it won't be too long before we're at the logon screen now. This does boot up quite quickly. Surprisingly so, actually, considering that this is probably older than... Some of the people who will be watching the video, I rather suspect. And then you get about 20 seconds of just black screen. So I guess we could look out the window, but it's a little bit overcast today. So maybe not. And soonish we should be... God, this is focus hunting quite a lot. But soon enough we should... There we go. And we are now at our logon screen. So I just pause, enter my password, and then start recording. I have entered in my password there. I'm just going to press enter. And we will see how long it takes to get into the desktop and the standard user area of this computer. Now, of course, to note, this isn't, of course, the fastest machine ever because it is a Pentium 4 although it is actually not too bad but that will be significantly thanks to the solid state drive which this has as a boot drive. As you can see there we go we're at our desktop now and in fact 
all of the screens have all loaded absolutely fine. Let's just dig up Task Manager and you can see the right click appeared quite quickly and there we have our Task Manager window. CPU is at 100%, I mean that's absolutely no surprise at all. And memory usage wise it's at about 1.2 gigabytes which is fairly reasonable considering we've got nothing loaded and our GPU isn't doing all that much. And of course the solid state drive is very happy. Most of what I do recreationally on the computer, and for that matter you as well, is web browsing. So I'm going to launch Google Chrome, which usually takes around about 20 to 30 seconds to load fully to a usable state. And it's looking like this time round might not be any different to that. Notice how just now we had quite a long period of white screen and nothing else, but everything appears to have loaded pretty much now. And that did cause our CPU to hit 100% for a while. So now I'm going to load my website with the mask content on. Although calling it mine is possibly a little bit unfair considering the amount of work that Jake has put into completely redesigning it. Um, but as it's a relatively simple website without too many website elements, it shouldn't provide too much work for the computer. But you probably saw there that it was still a little bit jerky, especially loading the upper graphic there. And if we scroll now, it's relatively smooth, but there is some blockiness as moving to the bottom of the page as it tries to load it. Although this is an Ultra HD display, we have to give the computer some credit there. If I load the main menu bar though, it's also a little bit jerky, but it actually copes relatively all right. I'll just load one of the bigger pages now. And once again, you can see that actually the time to move between pages is unsurprisingly not as smooth as on a much more modern device. But then that is completely expected considering this CPU is about 15 years old, having come out in the second quarter of 2004. So this page has a lot of pictures, an awful lot of pictures and also an open street map and you can see it's it's quite jumpy but it is actually mostly usable um just it's the kind of frame rate is is very low so doing interactive things it's very easy to overshoot and hopefully eventually this will work when i click on it um, but the CPU is at 100% once again and actually there we go it did jump down eventually so it, it, it does manifestly work but this is a simple website don't forget um, typical modern websites have a huge amount of elements in them and interactive content with adverts which does greatly hamper this However, to slightly mitigate that, I use a privacy focus extension, which is made by Jake, who developed some of the website, which is a very good privacy extension with significantly more features than a lot of its competitors. I'm not just saying that because we're friends, but because if I just dive into the settings here now, you can see that we have a whole array of fingerprinting protections from Canvas Audio, Hardware, WebGL, and also things like WebRTC protection, and that's just in the main features. In the advanced, there's user agent randomizer, proxy IP header spoofing, and a whole load of other features, many of which can be customized. But I intend to do another video about this at some point. The Pentium 4's usability within Windows is very reasonable with the Windows interface loading quite smoothly and certainly being respectable, I would say. Sure, it might show a little bit of what could be defined as lag sometimes, but really can't complain that much. It's, it's surprising how 
good it is. But of course that will be helped significantly by the solid state drive. Also in case you're wondering why I'm massively over clicking some things it's because I, I'm not sat particularly close to the mouse it's hard to know whether I've actually clicked on the desired item. As this video is already quite long and I don't have any games installed on this at the moment I will save that for a potential follow-up video about gaming on this Pentium 4. Although unsurprisingly it comes down to a certain element of the GPU that's installed and as this has a PCIe slot you can stick any modern graphics card in it. So then what becomes the limit is the Pentium 4 CPU which very quickly bottlenecks things. That's not to say that some titles don't work reasonably well though. I have actually tried some. So all in all this Pentium 4 is really not terrible at Windows 10 and general usability as a internet browsing and light use device. Um, thanks for watching this video. I know it's very different to my usual content, but hopefully that's perhaps a good thing. I certainly hope to make more tech-related content in future, and for that matter, do a video about running games on this. Because I'm sure that's what people would probably want to see, it's just I don't tend to game very much.